Welcome to the Inspire to Invest podcast, where we're sharing stories from real estate investors and how investing has changed their lives. This episode of the Inspire to Invest podcast has been brought to you by True Capital Real Estate, Strategic Success Consulting, and Infinite Real Estate Results. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Inspire to Invest podcast. Today, I've got Chris Busey and Constant Foster here with me. They're from Stonehearth Properties. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about their illustrious experience as real estate investors, because they definitely have so much experience that they're going to share with us today. So for Chris, he is a real estate developer from Victoria, BC. And with his partner, Sari Ringma, um, he became a full-time real estate investor with her back in 2019, after 22 years working for the Royal Canadian Navy. He was able to transfer a lot of these skills working as a project manager on their various developments. They currently have several long and short-term rentals in Canada and also abroad. And in total, these projects encounter or encompass, I should say, over 170 lots with a combined gross revenue of more than 120 million. So I'd say that's pretty fabulous. It's been four years. <laughs> I think everyone would like to make that kind of money in four years. Uh, and in terms of Constance, so after being married for 20 years and then divorcing, she found herself like many others needing to rebuild her life and her career. And she turned to real estate. So after doing some smaller renovation and duplex projects, she learned about private spending, private lending. Uh, so really speaking my language, and she really found that there are so many opportunities that she could offer that was better than the banks and providing that win-win for various private lenders. So since focusing on real estate full-time, she has raised more than $35 million in capital and she has launched a mutual fund trust, which she'll talk to us a little bit more about, that give investors the opportunity to use cash along with registered funds and she is currently focusing on a combination of single family home builds, luxury rentals, land assemblies, and also a project of 76 townhouses. So she's busy. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, Chris and Constance, for being here today. How are you? Great. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I know, Constance, you're joining us from Curacao. So <laughs> I am. So it's a little hot over here. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, no, thank you. G great to have the internet available so we can join the call. Yes. I know I talked about it a little bit on uh, your bios and your intro, but can you take us back a little bit in terms of what the actual catalyst was that motivated both of you to start investing in real estate? Obviously you had kind of independent paths and now you've joined forces, but maybe you can speak to what that moment was that really motivated you to start down this new career path. Yeah, I'm happy to start. Um, so back in 2018, um, Scott McGilvery was doing his road tour around uh, BC, like many of you know people in Keyspire. And um, Sari just happened to see it on, I think it was Facebook or somewhere, saw the ad. Uh, so he went to his little, whatever it was, three hour show thing he did. And yeah. at that point we were already had a couple of rental properties, but it was just to pay the mortgage. We yeah. weren't planning on doing it full time or anything like that. But once we saw his uh, him speak, um, we just realized that, hey, we're doing something right here. So we signed up for the 3D workshop and then yeah. it was history from there. We just decided yeah. to go full out. How about you, Constance? Yeah, for me, um, you know, I had, as I mentioned, was married for 20 years and worked on my homes and was rebuilding. And I was like, okay, I really liked real estate. So I also found an educational group where I was learning and um, I just decided I was going to dedicate myself to it full time. You know, there's that saying, if you've always done what you've, if you always do what you've always done, you're always going to get what you've always got. So I definitely just decided to give it a go and, uh, and realize though the part, uh, the value of partnering with other people, right. To really like bring about change. So I have been very lucky to align myself with some great partners. So, so how did you um, guys actually end up partnering up? <laughs> I don't think I know um, that story. Well, we've we've basically known each other throughout the different communities because Victoria is a small community, especially yeah. the real estate community. So we've, you know, we met through that. Um, I think, Sari, we might have been, worked with you at some point uh, as a realtor. Um, but then it was during the Synergy Mastermind that we really, we we created store of properties out of Synergy Mastermind with uh, our other partners. Um, yeah. But we realized we, we were still missing a key piece and that was the raising the funds. So yeah. we sought out somebody who, was an expert in that and that's where we found yeah. Constance. Yeah. So in terms of transitioning to this full time, uh, obviously you guys had different backgrounds. What would you say, like, did you jump into that full time or did you kind of straddle um, another past position at the same time while you were getting things started? 
You know, for me, I actually was focusing on multifamily and everything, like my focus is everything is relationship and, you know, being involved. And it's amazing because we don't know what we don't know. So it's only through conversation and interacting. And somebody pointed out to me, you know, private lending, it wasn't even on my radar and realized, you know, if you're working with people that like really embrace reciprocity and integrity, what you can build together is pretty phenomenal. And so for me, it was actually just being in relationship with other people and having other people like bring my attention to something else. And then I met my community, right. And my partners. So that's how it transitioned for me. Yeah. Yeah. And if you know, Sarah and I, we do everything uh, full out. We jump in full both feet in. Um, so we both decided we're going to do it full time. And in 2019, I left the Navy. Um, I cashed my pension out. So yeah. I used my pension money to build our first house and then yeah. went on from there. And um, Sari, she left her corporate job to become a realtor. And yeah. so we had no safety net and just jumped right in and we knew we had to make it work. So how did that look like then from going from a single family property that you built to now you're working on a subdivision. <laughs> so how, like, what does that process look like? Like, did you guys go out thinking that's something you wanted to do or did just a land opportunity come up? Like maybe you can walk me through that a bit. Yeah. Just, um, again, it's Sari. She's, she's crazy at, uh, finding great opportunities and pushing me, uh, past my limit. Um, so yeah, we, we built the one house and because of the market shift, we were buying turnkey rentals, but it wasn't making sense anymore. So we thought we'd just build them we JV, you know, build 10, 20 single family homes in JV yeah. and all that. That was our plan. Um, but then Sari saw this one property and saw how the numbers made sense and said, if we can build two houses, why can't we build 44? And, uh, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. So that's where we went. Now, and for you, Constance, like, obviously we've worked together in the private lending space, but for anyone that's watching that may be unfamiliar with the kinds of opportunities that exist in this capacity, can you shed a little bit of light on how that would work for someone that's never done it before? Sure, like, I think it's really important that you get to know like the people behind the project yeah. um, because integrity is a very big part of it. Find out a lot about their reputation and how long they've been doing it. It's great to have a community so that you can go out and ask the community what they know about that particular team. So I think that's kind of the first place to start. And then it's about education as well. So, you know, I'm always happy to like walk people through some of the stuff to get them like started in the process, places to look. Um, but it's education and the education never stops. But if you can kind of find your community, find your people to talk to and learn about projects, then you can find out about what there's different types of opportunities there's short-term lending there's opportunities to do secured lending like mortgages a lot of people don't know that they can uh, use cash or registered funds to actually hold a mortgage for somebody just like the bank yeah. and be making more than what you would make at the bank um, and other people don't know that they can also take charge of their registered accounts by putting it into a self-directed account they're able to lend it out for things again like mortgages or um, mutual fund unit uh, units where you can participate in different projects from like land development to income producing assets yeah. so you know um, I'm always happy to like help people get started on that path uh, lead them and like give them some uh, resources to follow up so people can reach out to me and I can help get them started. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is something you can answer or not from a securities compliance perspective, <laughs> but are you able to shed any light on what the difference in returns would look like? You know, for an average person at the bank, maybe they're making a few percent, but if they were going to go and put their their funds into an MFT, like on a land development project or on something else, or, or even a mortgage, like what have you typically seen in terms of those rate ranges? Yep you're probably looking at double digits, right? So that's something, uh, you, it depends on the position of your mortgage. Right now with the way interest rates are, you're definitely looking at double digits. Um, and another part of that is term, right? So, so some of these projects can be five or seven years, some can be two or three. So that also plays a factor, but uh, you're definitely looking as something a lot more than you're going to get at the bank and it's being backed <laughs> by real estate. So you yeah. don't get that like crazy fluctuation you get with stocks. Yeah. Real estate's yeah. a little bit more predictable. Yeah. I think that's something where when I've spoken to people and they often perceive private lending is so risky, like 
I've always liked the tangibility behind it. It's not like you're just walking down the street, like handing out money. Like there's almost always an asset. And in most instances, an appreciating asset that backs that investment. So that's one of the reasons that I've personally liked it. Um, now, I guess just looking at these last few years, what would you say are some of the challenges that have come up as you've, you know, amplified your projects and, and diversified what you're working on? Yeah, I'll go into that. I mean, obviously, um, cost certainty is the is the big one. Like we we all, it's one thing about land development um, that you know I've learned over the last couple of years is they take a long time, right? When you do a single family yeah. home, it's your chances are you know the costs; they're not going to change. You know, you know the the market; it's not going to change that much because it's all yeah. within a six month period. When you're doing a land development that takes two to five to seven years, yeah, you know the market's going to shift multiple times. Um, the costs are going to, you know, up or down, depending on what's going on in the world. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, COVID hit for us during the middle of our projects. So it yeah. really shifted um, what our expected cost would be. Um, and now with the market downgrade, it's obviously shifted what our um, expected sales would be in timelines. Yeah. Um, so that's been the biggest struggle. Um, the good news is um, for all our projects, we purchased the land well bef before COVID, before the COVID spike. Yeah. So we have the land at a great cost, which has really allowed us, has given us that breathing room in all our projects to yeah. absorb the cost um, increase. I mean, there's also been a, a sales increase too since the start of it, um, but uh, for the extended timeline, it's allowed us to absorb that um, and still yeah. be in the positive. Yeah. yeah. And how about for you, Constance, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I think I think the thing is just to always, which I always teach people too, is just always make sure we have extra exits, right? Like make sure you know that if a, you know that you have an A, B, and C, we you know, or even a D. You never want to go to D, but when you know that you can do D in a pinch, then that's where you get like the 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 courage and the knowledge that you can do this project and move forward. So that's something we really try to focus on, yeah. and I think um, you know with with the way our team has worked has gotten us through this difficult time. So yeah, yeah something to, to look for is multiple exits. Now, do you think looking back at these last few years, is there anything that jumps out to you as say the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, well, I'll give one example of, uh, I say it whenever I speak pretty much is one of the biggest lessons I learned in land development um, is that you're going to do this full time is to make sure you could pay yourself during the project. Um, yeah. it's the biggest thing, like it's the biggest stressor that, uh, you, us as a team has learned over the last couple of years, yeah. um, because we all, you know, anticipated that it would take one to two years max <laughs> for a project, right. And we'll pay ourselves at the end. Well, yeah. that doesn't work, right. Cause you have bills to pay, mortgages to pay, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. you have to structure the deal where it makes sense so you can pay yourself during, during it. And, um, yeah. you know, when we started out, I was worried that, you know, how could I use private lending money? To pay myself right didn't make sense but you gotta think about it. it's the project they're they're lending for the project they want the project to be whole so in order for it to be whole you have to be whole so yeah. that was one of the biggest lessons i learned i think and i've uh yeah it's it's been a big one so for someone that's considering budgeting budgeting a project like that is that embedded as a management fee or an acquisition fee like how have you determined that ratio like compared to the project yeah it is uh you can do both at uh, acquisition fees or management fees um, you kind of have to depend on how your lending structure is too, because yeah. obviously um, if your lenders are in just debt financing, um, then it doesn't really matter how much you pay yourself because you're literally taking your profit and paying yourself up front. Yeah. Um, but if it's um, equity financing, well then, you know, the more you take, the less this, your lenders get. So you really got to work that out and uh, be upfront with it. That's the big thing is just be upfront to what your plan is paying yourself and then everyone should be happy. Now, can you, for anyone that doesn't know, can you explain that difference between the debt and equity? Like debt financing and equity? <laughs> debt financing is kind of independent of like how the project's performing. So like an equity, an equity thing is that you're actually joining in with the team to see. And so if the project does well, you get the blue sky along with the yeah. team. But if the project does maybe not as well, you also take that journey with them. So mm -hmm. um, that's an equity role um, investing. Uh, debt is more that you're, uh, there's a targeted rate of return and it's like a loan. So you're like lending the company money and the company is obligated to, to get that paid to you. And it can be structured monthly or deferred. There's a lot of different ways, but those are the two main differences. Okay. 
Great. Thank you. And then in terms of lessons for you, is there anything that really stands out to you as something, um, you know, that you would want to share to someone else so that maybe they can avoid a, a challenge or a mistake or anything like that? Yeah, I think communication with the team, like we definitely, the systems we started out with were great, but as we grow, you always have to have your eyes on your system and continue to like refine them. You can't just do it at the end of the project. Yeah. It's the continual process, yeah. you know, um, because a lot of us, it's learning for all of us all the time. Like that's yeah. one thing in this space, the learning never stops. Yeah. So I think it's just continually refining your systems as you move along and grow. Yeah. I think that's really important. And the communication with the team is really important as well. I think one of the strengths I love about our group is we all have a role and we all have integrity and we all show up. And that's yeah. really important. Yeah. I can't imagine doing this project when you don't have that um, trust with your members. So that's really important. Yeah. And then just keeping that communication going. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. And obviously what works when there's just a few of you would be very different once you have like 10 of you or a hundred of you. Mm -hmm. So I can see how you may need to adapt and change as those things change with your business. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you look back at, you know, everything you have accomplished so far, what do you feel like you're most proud of or what you would perceive as your biggest success so far? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> um, I, I say for me, it's just um, the lifestyle that we've been able to, you know, do for our family it's not necessarily like the extravagant lifestyle it's just the you know what we'd be able to show our kids right like um i think one of the biggest you know things that made me um excited is when we started building um we were hiring a lot of our our son they you know he's a, an athlete so they couldn't get regular jobs they're too busy with with sports yeah so we hired them during the summers him and all his buddies so we had six hockey kids working for us all summer yeah um, they worked for us for two summers uh, maybe three actually on our home builds and now all six of them are in the trades. Yeah. They've all loved it. They all want to do what we're doing. So it's just that role model aspect, I guess, the best thing. That's what I'm most proud of, I think, in our accomplishments is that we've been able to really show our kids and, you know, our, our friends um, what the opportunities are. Yeah. No, I think that's really powerful. And just for kids in general, I think that this is something that should be exposed to them far more often and also far younger to understand, mm -hmm. you know, the purpose of assets and how you can build that wealth whether it's real estate or even another platform, because I think right now too many people are educated and they just go get jobs and they're living paycheck to paycheck. And there's obviously better options out there. Yeah. For me, it's just the fact that, you know, um, a lot of people get strengths from their partner, like if they're married or in a partnership and then doing it on your own, it feels like you just can't keep up with couples or you don't know where to start. And I think the thing I'm most proud of is realizing you can do it on your own and you, you know, because you can align yourself with other people that are aligned with you, right, where your partner may or may not be, and that could be a detriment. So, you know, you can do this on your own and you can start small and then you can start building other relationships yeah. and, and, you know, build your own wealth. So I think that's like kind of a big thing for me that uh, just step into it and, you know, opportunities come. Yeah, no, I love that. So with that being said, we're just going to take a really brief break for a word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Carleen Sue, and I'm the CEO of True Capital Real Estate. Our mission is to help busy professionals build lasting wealth. We focus on multifamily purpose-built rentals as a strategic and accessible investment strategy. Our goal is to demystify real estate investing and be your trusted partner to handle all aspects from beginning to end. Because after all, it's not actually about real estate. It's about having a robust and secure financial future so you can focus on the people and things that you care about the most. Thanks again for following along with this episode of Inspired to Invest. In addition to real estate, investing, and running my own brand experience agency for 18 years, I also published a book called The Accidental Entrepreneur in October of 2021. This is my story and it chronicles how I turned tragedy into triumph to embrace my destiny in entrepreneurship. If you're interested in picking up a copy, you can find the link at serenahomesrealtor.com and you can also find my link tree with all of the retailers in the details below. Thanks again for your support. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast and we'll get you right back to it. But I have some exciting news to share. 
myself from Strategic Success and Corey McKinnon from Infinite Results have banded together so we can bring to you an amazing platform where you can learn and grow and have support on your real estate journey. We're building a community. We're building the help and the support. We've got the coaching for you. We've got the content. So if you want more information and see how it can help you on your journey, click the link below in the show notes or click the link in my bio for more information. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Inspired to Invest podcast. I have Chris Busey and Constant Foster here from Stonehearth Properties and Five Oaks Land Development. And they're sharing their experiences as real estate investors and how they started to build these very significant, sizable projects out in Victoria, BC, but also holding properties really around the country and around the world. So uh, with that being said, you've shared some of the things pertaining to your challenges and lessons. Um, but when you look at now these last few years, what would you say is the craziest thing that's actually happened to you as a real estate investor so far? Hmm. I feel like it's always a fun one. <laughs> that's yeah. a pretty interesting <laughs> responses. I think just how fast we've we've gone in such a short time like really i mean um actually one example is you know we talked to uh, one of the guys that works for us he's uh he's been excavated in the excavation world for 60 years yeah um and he's really walked us through the construction side like he he basically mentored me throughout the the whole process yeah um, and i really you know obviously we, we pay him well but I, you know i felt i needed i owed him more because so i know he saved us probably millions of dollars in mistakes yeah. Um, so I really want to do something for him. Um, so I was talking to Sarah Bush. Well, just wait, just wait, um, see, see how it goes. And then he calls me that same night, just out of the blue. And he said, I need to thank you, Chris. The work you've done, the the project you've given me has given my son, his son, uh, focus because his son became started working in the in the business as well at 19. Yeah. Um, but had no purpose, no, no alignment. Um, and then he started working on one of our projects and he took ownership of it and he was there every day and he was working. And yeah. now he's now he's going off on his own now as a yeah. couple of year, uh, as of yesterday actually. Yeah. So it was just it was just it was a neat feeling, right? It was just, I know it's not crazy outlandish, but it was just a neat feeling to yeah. to see that and the power of this. Yeah. No, it's huge. I don't know if, if I'm looking for an example. It's probably something more just like when I was first starting out and just having to have a grit determination, like to, to put in the time because, you know, I wasn't starting with a lot of resources. Yeah. So I had more time than money. So I was definitely, you know, I knew I was sleeping on the floor, rented, you know, I knew to get somebody else's old purpose old kitchen and repurpose it and learn how to tile and plumb and do all of that. And just honestly, my mindset was, you know what, like I can just give it a go. And if it doesn't work, I can always hire somebody. So yeah. I would say just kind of, yeah, it's more just actually getting my hands dirty and getting down and getting things done at the beginning. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think that's the thing. It's not unusual for a lot of investors to start out where they have the time, but they don't have the money, right? So they will have these unusual circumstances or sacrifices that they'll make, but it's all short-term pain for long-term gain, of course. Um, now, when you look back at the education and mentoring that you have received, what would you say is the best advice that you've gotten in these last few years? Um, for me, it's just honestly to take action, right? I mean, there's we've all you know been taught the the mechanics of everything and everything else, but until you you know take action, there's really nothing going to happen, right? We've yeah. all seen people that have paid tens of thousands of dollars for education but aren't doing anything because they just don't take action. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that's the biggest takeaway I've always, I've always gotten from people. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I think the one thing is, is like the learning never stops. Like, honestly, you think like you never think that you're there because there's always going to be more to learn and you can always learn more from others. And, but in doing action, you know, when you're actually in it, you're learning a lot more like a mutual fund trust. I didn't know what a mutual fund trust is for it, for our purpose, like a year and a half ago, ask me about mutual fund trust today. I know a lot more about it and I continue to learn more. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to realize too, for people that are starting out is sometimes you don't need to have all the answers is that you just, you need to have the people though, that have the answers that can help bring it together. Yeah. So like in our mutual fund trust, we work with a securities lawyer, we work with axiom advisors, we 
work with like a whole team of people that bring it all together. So if I don't know the answer, they do it. That's their job. So I think that's a really important piece too. Yeah. I think that's really smart. And just, um, Going back to that, like when you are a real estate investor, there are constantly things changing, like the house and market's very fluid, the government's very involved in legislation and the official plan and all of these different things. So I think even if you think you've got a handle on it, like CMHC wants to change the rules today. <laughs> so, you know, there's just all these things that are constantly happening. And that's why I think it's also so important to be part of these communities and groups where you can share those resources, because otherwise, like you could find yourself behind or, or make a mistake or something like that. Um, now in terms of how real estate investing has changed your life, I know Christy, like you spoke to that a little bit, but how would you kind of outline that for yourself and what does financial freedom look to you? I know that you guys are still in the weeds a little bit with your projects, but you know, what would you say, um, what will that look like when you can be like, I've made it, you know, I've arrived. I think for us, it's, it's, you know, I think we're, the fun part is I think we're closer than we, we think. Um, it doesn't feel like it right now. because, like you said, we're in the weeds quite a bit right now. Um, but for me, it's just being able to do the projects I want to do when I want to yeah. do them. Right. Yeah. Like I, we're not going to retire, retire. That's just not in our blood. Um, yeah. But do I want to be doing, you know, 170 units um, a year or, yeah. you know, no, of course not. You know, um, I just want to find the smaller projects, you know, when we, when we want to do them, when we want to do them, when we don't want to do them. And just travel, right? It's just the ability to travel. This is an amazing world. And I just yeah. want to see more of it. Yeah. For me, the projects that we have are like, I'm very proud of what, you know, what we have in front of us. And, mm-hmm. um, and I love the learning. Like, I love learning. I think our whole team, like, we're not idle individuals. <laughs> so, yeah. um, <laughs> You know, I, I look forward to seeing our projects come to fruition and then I'm like just, you know, and we will always probably have something on the go, but it'll be like more just to keep our minds active and then we'll have a bit more time freedom. Um, we don't really have that as much at the moment, but it's coming, I yeah. hope, in the future. <laughs> so. yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. One of, sorry, one of our goals for Stone Earth is to basically grow the company so we you'll know, make it a proper business. Mm-hmm. Right, where mm-hmm. where we're not necessarily in the weeds every day, we we hire for that, right? Yeah. Um, so find our who's uh, and the who not how um, yeah. to take our roles out, and so we'd be more uh, not silent partners, but more you know shareholders, yeah. uh, just mm-hmm. help or giving the direction, and then you know let the company grow. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, now, in terms of Stone Earth and with Five Oaks, can you talk a little bit about? those projects and what kind of opportunities there could be for investors or there, that are tuning in? Yeah, it's actually pretty exciting right now because um, as I said, land development can be a long process Yeah. Uh, and in store of properties, uh, we have nine townhomes right now. They're just coming to, to the end. We're yeah. probably going to list them in the next week or two. Nice. Um, and we should be, you know, basically completed by, uh, by, by Christmas, which is pretty exciting. Um, it's been a long go, but yeah. we're, we're there. Um, so that one's, you know, finishing up and now we're starting to refocus on um, Sequoia Wind, um, which is the project under Five Oaks, yeah. um, which we're partnering with, uh, Stone Earth is partnering with Kathy Van Dockerberg on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one, um, the land had been prepped. Um, I had another project, we had to remove a lot of rock. So we basically moved 4,000 loads, dump truck loads of rock from one wow. project to the next. Yeah. Uh, so it's ready, prepped to go. Um, the development permits um, is, is approved. Um, so now we're in... Um, discussion with a contractor right now who uh, will probably take the lead on the build of them. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully springtime we'll be uh, breaking ground and um, erecting uh, our townhomes. Awesome. Do you want to add anything to that in regards to your MFT? Yeah. So as far as like if people want to get involved with us, we always um, I would encourage people to reach out. We sometimes have pro- a short term private lending opportunities and mortgages. But the biggest thing that we're promoting right now is our mutual fund trust. Mm-hmm. And um, that was set up, by, as I mentioned, by our securities lawyer and an accounting firm. And it takes both cash and registered funds. Um, it's a two year term and um, it offers 15 percent base rate with a dip option and you get a bonus if you stay in for 24 months. So the effective rate is 17.12%, which is pretty good. So if people want to learn more about that, I would encourage them to, you know, either visit our website at www.shproperties.ca or reach out to me at Constance at shproperties.ca. Now, obviously the um, 
purpose of this podcast is inspiring other people to invest. So I always like to ask my guests what one of their favorite quotes is and something that really motivates them. I just go back to just, just do it right. Like I know it's a, you know, it's the Nike tagline, whatever it is, but for me, it's just, you know, we've always gone that way. Like, um, just go ahead and do it and you can figure it out afterwards, right? Like if you're, if you have the right team, the right support, the right people, you'll figure it out, right? Like none of us knew anything about land development a few years ago. None of us, I never knew how to build a house before I built my first house, right? You'll figure it out along the way, as long as you have the support, yeah. right? And, and the work ethic to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think one of my favorite quotes is actually not real estate based around smart. It's about life is a lot like riding a bicycle. You have to keep moving forward to keep your balance. And I think that's also really important in business, right? Because we're always coming across challenges and we have to kind of just keep our focus on solutions and actions to keep moving forward. So but I think it's also a good a good quote for life. So that's, yeah, it's one yeah. I think work obviously consumes so much of our lives that they're all intertwined. Uh, so with that being said, thank you for being here. Is there anything in particular that you would like to leave the audience with or any pearls of wisdom before we wrap up? Um, no, just, I mean, like I said, if you ever, if you want, just reach out, um, always available to, to talk real estate, um, but just get out there and do it right. Like um, use the networks we have. Um, there's some great networks in Canada or in the U S wherever you are. Yeah. Um, just join the networks and, and surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say just, if you're not really sure on how to get started with private lending or you want to learn like more, just reach out. I'm happy to put you on a path or connect you with some ideas. You know, there are a lot of great communities out there and resources and I can, I'm definitely happy to like help, help um, shorten that path for you. Yeah. And I think that's the main thing. Like when I started out diversifying, like I think just having all of those conversations with people is so important. And I'm always surprised when I talk to people and they won't even have those conversations and like, they don't even realize the untapped potential that's out there. And, you know, there's obviously no harm in just having some of those calls to understand it. And maybe you're not ready right now, but maybe a year from now or two years from now, you will be right. So I think, yeah, just to both of your points, just trying to, to learn from other people and see what's out there and it can really change your life. So with that being said, thank you so much for your time today. And of course, for sponsoring uh, the podcast this past month. Uh, we very much appreciate it. For anyone that has been following along, thank you for your time. And if you have liked this episode, please make sure that you like and subscribe below. And you can also follow along at Inspired to Invest podcast on social. And of course, don't forget when you invest in yourself, the sky's the limit. Thanks again. Thanks again to our sponsors, True Capital Real Estate, Strategic Success Consulting, and Infinite Real Estate Results for bringing you this episode of Inspired to Invest. The views represented on this podcast are for general information only and does not constitute investment or other professional advice or an offering of securities. The host and guests featured on Inspired to Invest make no representations as to the performance of any particular investment. Should you decide to make an investment, you are responsible for conducting your own review and analysis. It is recommended that you obtain independent legal accounting and tax advice from licensed professionals.